Let me bang you. I do bang. let you bang. I hey, let me bang you, Jason. Let me bang you. Let you bang. Let me bang you. Let me bang. Let me bang. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jason. No for gay Jason, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? Hey, everybody, welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted podcast. It's me. I'm here with Bill Dawes. You got very dressed up for this. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a great show. We got, we got a great show. We got Jimmy Rivera, who just had a, an epic fight. I think it was fight of the night. It literally was fight of the night. He got 50 grand for it. Thank God. Because, uh, oh, we got fight of the night. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't that hard to get fight of the night on that card. But, uh, the but most but, boring but, card ever. But still, he got it. Um, I'm happy for him. He's a great guy. We also have uh, Kevin Kroom who um, is also a badass fighter. He had a rough night. I'm not going to you know, pull any punches, but he's also a great fighter. We have uh, Heather Jo Clark, who's uh, going to come on here and talk about some crazy experiences she had, as well as my man Mikey Gordon, who is a comic slash pro wrestler slash filmmaker who had his first boxing win against another oh. comic. Uh, he fought <laughs> another comic. I was there. I did commentary. He knocked the guy out in like 12 seconds. Uh, it was insane. Uh, they, they Where had, was this? Where was this comic fight? It was in San Diego. Uh, and they like basically like used to be, they used to, he, the guy used to open for him and then they had some kind of beef and then it became like an online Twitter beef uh, or Facebook. So beef. it was a real fight. It wasn't like a promotion and then they just added comics. No, no, no. They, they legit hated each other. Uh, and uh, it was crazy. It was, it was one of the funniest things. I don't, I don't want to ruin it because I want him to be there to experience this. Uh, but yeah, so what, what happened? So I obviously thank you for all the kind messages. My, my dog passed away last week and I got lots of, a lot of fans of the podcast, uh, hit me up saying, um, you know, telling me about how, you know, their dogs passed away too and, and some good advice and, and thank you, uh, which is really nice, really nice people to reach out. Um, and, uh, it shows like, you know, I, I don't know what it is with guys and dogs. I mean, girls and dogs too, but for some reason, like, I just feel like men and dogs are just like, it's like the closest bond between like two beings is yes. a guy and his dog. Um, yeah. That's so, like the Tom Dreesen joke. He goes, people say uh, dog's man's best friend. Well, women are like, oh, my wife is my best friend. Really? Put your wife and your dog in the trunk of your car. Open it an hour. See which one is happy to see you. Yeah. And it's funny, Tom Dreesen, who's also a great comic. A lot of times I'll hear those jokes from other people. And it's like a, like a joke that someone, people just tell each other. But I'm like, he wrote the original joke. It's almost like- He was Tom, the original guy. He was the original guy. Like a lot of times we're like, you're like, oh, well, they say that this happens. He was like, they. He was the guy who actually- <laughs> he was the, Yeah, yeah. He was the guy who wrote, he was the first one with a joke. He goes, I'm dating a homeless woman, which is great, because after the date, I can just drop her off anywhere. Right. Which is hacked by a million comics. A million so. comics. A million comics. Uh, so uh, I had a birthday party. My, my, my daughter gets invited to these like A-list parties. I'm like living, like, cause she's friends with all these people through her class. So we got to go to, uh, well, I'm friends with Dean McDermott. It was Tori Spelling and, and, and Dean, their kid, Bo. They had a birthday party. That was on Tuesday. I went there, and it was amazing. I mean, they had, like, the Disney princesses came, Elsa and Anna, and they sang. Oh, no. My daughter was like- It was probably head. the real Disney princesses, too, because what else are they doing now? <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. They're, they're on, like, OnlyFans. Uh, so <laughs> it, was, it was those two. And then I go to Dean. I'm like, so then- so that, that was fun. And then it was, uh, they had Mickey Mouse. My daughter was like beyond scared of Mickey Mouse. You know, like she just gets like, she just looks at Mickey Mouse and then she, she, she runs for her life. And, and, and the guy had like, a, like an accent. And I go to Dean, I'm like, this is probably like some guy in MS-13 or something. You know, like, you, you, know, you never know who's underneath the Mickey Mouse costume, right? You never know. Uh, so that was, that, was, that was pretty cool. Um, and then I did a couple shows, a couple live shows. Did one last night, one the night before. I had a show in Orange County for like a bunch of like some guy who like owns a studio space and he wants to do live events. And, and it's a bunch of, he does like promotions for the Spearman Rhino. So it's all these like ex strippers, which are always like, they're like still hot, but they have good senses of humor and they're not, they're kind of happy. They're not stripping and a lot of them married up. So they're, they don't have to do that anymore. Yes. And they always laugh at every dirty and filthy joke. 
I think ex strippers is like my favorite demographic, actually. Uh, yeah, they're great. It's always like when porn stars come to the show, people are like, are they offended? I'm like, no, there's nothing you could do to offend the Like, I mean, what are you going to say? Like, yeah. they literally, like, a lot of these people come from a set where it's like, they just watched, like, you know, some people get blasted in the face in and, and, and nine different angles. <laughs> like, what? Well, what, the what, thing what, about what, strippers, though, the ex strippers are good if they then married. And yeah. they have a better life. The ex strippers who are like having a worse life, you probably don't want them in your crowd. No, that's a good point. That that is a very good point. Well, these ex strippers were actually very, very happy, uh, and they were they were like, and I I don't know what it is. Maybe because of the quarantine, and I live in LA, but I find like, uh, and look, my look, I don't cheat on my wife. Let me get this set straight. I have, to, I have to preface that I love my wife, but I feel like now every girl I see is like hot. It's almost <laughs> like uh, when I went to college, yeah, Tony Binghamton, and it was like the winter. And then all of a sudden, like the sun came out in the spring, yes. and girls all came out in their and you're like, wait, that girl goes to the school? Like, like that? Yeah. Like, that's what I almost feel like was it's quarantine, where maybe mm -hmm. you, get, you get spoiled in LA because you're not around. Are you having that same experience? Oh, yeah, I know exactly. What you're yeah, it was like back in the, back in exactly what you're talking about in college or New York. Like, New York is cold and miserable in the winter, and then spring comes, and all of a sudden, like, boobies come out, like flowers in spring, and it's like kind of like Groundhog's Day. You're like waiting yeah, for. Yeah, you're like, wait, what, do you go to store? Like, what school am I at? You know, and then after like two weeks, you're used to it, and you're like, oh, the girls here suck. Uh, you know, like <laughs> there's, there's like no hot girls here. Uh, but yeah, 100. percent And then uh, I don't know. Right now, I was, I was watching. I, so I watched the Trump. You watch any of the Trump highlights, by the way? The Trump highlights? Do you mean Trump, from CPAC? From the, the CPAC, yeah. Like, I didn't see it yet. Dude, he's like. I don't, look, I, I, you know, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not happy that like Biden's bombing Syria and gas prices are $35 and uh, for like, you know, <laughs> per mile. And it's like, it's just, he also hasn't had a press conference in like a hundred days. It's like the longest the president's never been had a press conference. The stock market's like crashed already. Like, but, you know, it's just crazy. But anyway, uh, that being said, dude, to Trump, like you almost like miss him. Like he, he's now he's doing like act outs in his speech, but he's basically talking about, he's like, you know, Biden, he's talking about women's sports and how like transgender is now dominating. He's like, yeah. women, they couldn't even lift the thing. It was like, oh, some guy comes in and now he's acting out. He's like added to, <laughs> he's added to his comedy routine now. He's and he's the like, carrot top of presence. Dude, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> People are dying laughing. And then I was like, it inspired a bit. I wrote, I'm like, you know what? Uh, I support transgenders in men's, in, in men that, you know, biological men that became women or however you want to, the PC ways to say it that are now doing female sports because uh, you know, if somebody's willing to do that to get a gold medal, that's the kind of commitment I'm looking for in my, my athlete as like a coach. That's, that's who I want. In fact, I'm going to tell yeah. my whole team to transition. We might actually win a, a match next year. Uh, like you, who knows? Maybe we'll, this is the year we don't go 500. That's a great so, joke. And by the way, there's nothing offensive by that joke, which is bringing up transgender is going to make every asshole in the crowd tighten. So uh -huh. Although it's not offensive, like they're just offended at the idea that you brought up a word that could be offensive if used wrong. It's unbelievable. It, it's it's unbelievable. It's like I remember when like when like War Machine like beat up his girlfriend. Uh, well, not I mean it was before like it was you know I didn't beat it, but it almost killed her. But I was like you know he beat up this whoever domestic violence. It was his first win in five years or something. I made a joke, <laughs> and then oh. people were like, "How dare you make fun of?" I'm like, "Can we at least like?" think about who I'm making fun of and, and yeah. like, oh, it, oh, it's a win to beat up. A no, it's not a win. It's a fuck. It's like, that's why it's a joke. That's the anatomy of a joke. That's like, how jokes work. Like, yeah, it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's crazy that like, you have to, like you think of a joke and you're like, who am I going to offend versus who am I going to make laugh? Yeah. It, it's oh. like, it's like you're making a joke to not offend the one person that's going to hate you anyway. That person yeah. is going to hate you anyway. This is, we live in a squeaky wheel society. The squeaky wheel gets the oil and it will from here on out. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, 1,000%. 1, 1, so uh, how, now you've been touring with Piven. How have, those, how have those shows been going? It's been good. I really like it actually because he's, he's pretty, um, he's pretty, you, you toured with him as well. He, he's not, look, I toured with a lot of guys that, and I don't want to name some of their names because, but a lot of them, all they wanted to do after shows was just chase women. You know what I mean? They just want to go, uh, like they want to be, be a wingman or whatever. When I, when I, when I toured with Dalia, all he wanted to do was play Jack, blackjack, and he always hit on 16. Guys, come on. <laughs> I would say that, that's such a bad joke. No, but um, 
but he's he's just very studious. After shows, he wants to, he wants notes. I don't know. That. Oh yeah, he wants to talk about the show and have notes and then have dinner and he's recording a lot. So it's kind of cool to be with well, someone who's like a new comic who's kind of like still curious about how it all works. Well, it's good because a lot, you know, I, what I liked about touring with him was that you had his entourage crowd and then you had his crowd from people that were in uh, that show on the BBC he did. Like you, you knew exactly what <laughs> Peabody or whatever, the, whatever it was Miss Selfridge. Miss Selfridge. Miss Selfridge. Selfridge. But like you saw exactly who his fans were. It was like, older 70 year old women or or <laughs> like yo what's up bro and like i'll never forget i toured with them one time and some of the entourage fans were the biggest dicks there was one guy that stood online who was like an open mic comic in boston waited an hour and a half for the meet and greet punched him in the balls and then ran away and and because I, I, I wasn't looking i look over he's bald over i go what the fuck he goes that guy just hit me the guy just is like a mile away and i was like <laughs> oh my because he thought maybe that ari the character would find that funny like <laughs> <laughs> people like people just hate it. I like I remember we were having dinner outside and some guy walks past me and goes, Fuck you, Ari Gold. And I'm like, I, I'm like, this guy wants to fight the character. Like, he doesn't yeah, even, exactly. like, know anything about Jeremy Piven. It was crazy. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Different had, like when I toured with Jamie Kennedy for like four years, he was just this type of celebrity that everyone wanted to put in a headlock and give a noogie to. For some reason, his energy was like, yo, oh, Jamie Kennedy. And they just put him in headlocks constantly. Yeah, you see that a lot. I remember um sitting at like, I was at like, I don't know, some diner at Mel's Diner at like three, two in the morning and Tom Green was there and people were just coming up to him and sitting at his table and taking yeah. selfies. And like, yeah. and he's not that guy. He's like, he just wants to fucking eat. He's a pretty actually like a shy guy, a reserved guy. Yeah. And then the jackass guys, like it's like that, those guys, like their, their fans think they could like just tase them and run away. Um, <laughs> Ron Jeremy, before anyone knew he was a rapist, I mean, people would just like, I remember being at a concert with Ron Jeremy. It was me and Ron Jeremy, my girlfriend, his girlfriend. It was backstage. Uh, it was pretty cool. We got actually, he was best friends with John Popper, him and John from the Blues Traveler. Blues Travelers, yeah, and, man. And what would happen was he would open the show because Ron Jeremy was like a trained pianist. And John oh, Popper, and they would start the show and Ron would be underneath the keyboard playing and everybody would think it was John Popper. And then Ron Jeremy would pop up and then everyone would be like, oh, and then John Popper would come out playing the harmonica. It was like, it was like they were like magicians or something. And oh, I, remember, wow, cool. I remember doing shots with Ron Jeremy, the guy from Live, uh, the main lead singer from Live, uh, John Popper, and we were backstage taking shots. And all they kept talking about those guys, how much they didn't get Dane Cook. It was like when Dane Cook was like the biggest comic and they all, like, what's the deal? What's this Dane, John Popper what was, your, was like, What was your explanation at the time? Cause you had to give him something. I was like, he puts on a really good show or something. I was like friends with Dane. I didn't want to like, sh you know, yeah. you don't want to shit talk him. I was like, well, it's, it's, you, you, gotta, you gotta see him live or something. It's something where like, maybe it doesn't always translate to television. You know, it's a live. It's just kind of true, right? Yeah. Dane, I mean, look, there's a reason why like, if you go see Todd Barry live, he'll get like a good reception. But it's, it's not a rock star. Then you see him on yeah. TV and people are crying, laughing. Same with Gaffigan. Yeah. Because yeah. Gaffigan live, it's like the energy is like, it's okay energy, but the jokes are really strong. Dane sometimes wouldn't have the strongest material per se, but the way he captured a fucking stage was like, yeah. I've never, I've still to this day never heard, and the material was great. Don't get me wrong. He just like, he knew how to stretch out a joke. Like I've never seen anybody stretch out a joke. Yeah, for sure. But he would just, it was, I still have never seen anyone kill as hard as Dane Cook back in his, in his let's say prime, but like, uh, Back in Laugh Factory 2006 type of deal. It was insane. Like I, I remember going to a comedy club in LA. There was one person on stage. People were heckling. No, everyone was miserable. Everyone was like, I almost went back to New York. I go across the street. It's Dublin's comedy club. Oh yeah. Like Vince Vaughn is like introducing them. There's like 700 women from Orange County. <laughs> Dane goes on stage, does an hour and a half, and blows out the room like it was a fucking Metallica concert. And I yeah. was like. I, I never I never seen him like it before. I know like you can do this as a comic. Holy shit! I didn't know comedy was like that. So props yeah. to Dane, props to Dane um, in that regard. I know people want to shit talk him, but whatever. Yeah, um, of course they do. So uh, yeah, um, so let's talk about some MMA. By the way, are you how often you're like the biggest shape shifter I've ever seen in my life? Because Fine. I'll see a picture of you and you have like a gut and you look like you haven't you've been quarantining for seven years and then. The next picture, you're like, just got my brown belt, and you have like a six pack. Like, 
Like what? I definitely don't have a six pack. I that's that's completely. That. You have a six pack. Now uh, I have a TRT six pack, but what? Uh, but I've been doing that fight every day. I do an hour of boxing. Uh, this, yeah. this workout. How like how how often are you training jujitsu? Um, I mean, I haven't trained in a while because I've been traveling. But I was I usually train like three or four times a week. Wow. Now, Four times a week gets me, my body starts breaking down. So I, I usually keep it to three. Now you just got your brown belt. Have you noticed people are going harder on you, like the black belts? Are they going just as hard? Are they testing you? Well, there, there is a black belt I train with who definitely, like, uh, he, he, he's going hard because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of coming up on his, on his realm. So he definitely, every time he sees me, he wants to. And he'll do this bullshit. I don't know if people do uh, train jujitsu where he won't tap, but he'll go like, ah, and then you'll stop and then he'll keep going. And I'm like, motherfucker, I just submitted you, but you somehow got you out of it with like no. a yelp. Did you, did you actually tell him that? Um, no, right? Well, he was, going for, he was going for a rear naked and I took his, uh, I got his foot and elbow uh, into his shin and pulled the foot. So it was like a foot lock, not illegal, turning it in. And he went, ah, and I let it go. And he kept going for the choke. Is he uh, Brazilian? No, he's just, he's a hedge. He has a hedge fund, so he's hedge fund mentality. Oh, like you know? when everything is win, win, win. Everything win. is win, win or die. Exactly. Now, so. um, now, have you saw the Gary Tonin thing that everyone's talking about, where he smacked? Uh, oh, wait, you're talking about Gordon Ryan. Gordon Ryan, yeah, 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 yeah. Gordon Andre Ryan. Galvo. Yeah, I think that was staged. You think so? It has to be because they're trying to drum up th this match between them as a super fight, right? And if they re and they were in the room together, someone's filming it, and he slaps him. And by the way, are they doing combat jujitsu? Is that what the fight they're setting up, or is it just? Well, like isn't Galvo race? had like he's had fights before, right? I mean, he actually had MMA fights, right? Isn't he actually Galvo? Did he have fights? No, I don't think so. I think he's I mean, a straight, but he's a jujitsu legend, that guy. Yeah, I mean, but he's also like in his forties. So you're saying he wouldn't take a slap like that and, and walk away? Is what you're saying? I'm, and then the fact that it's he, he slapped and you see Gordon Ryan approach and then it cuts. It just seems very convenient that they're trying to drum up a super fight because they could probably drum up a super fight at this point for jujitsu and make millions. Millions, really? I think at this point, yeah. Now, does Gordon Ryan ever lose? I feel like every time I watch him, he wins. Like, is he that? Because I don't follow Juju that closely, but I just follow him and a couple other guys. I don't think he yeah. ever Does he ever lose? It's like he always beats him. Um, he hasn't lost in a couple of years, yeah. And then Gabby Garcia was there, and she was the most scariest person in that room. I mean, she is fucking, like, jacked beyond belief. Yeah, like, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's a shame that, like, there's no MMA weight class for Gabby Garcia, really. I was thinking about that because, like, they can't have a – it's like if they had – they couldn't have a heavy weight because that's insulting. You have to call it body positive weight or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Because even when you like buy women's clothes, they never have like extra large. They have to have like a different name for it because women feel too humiliated buying an extra yeah. large. You know? Yes. And, and now sex positive is now, what does that mean? That just means you, you like to fuck people? Like, I don't even, <laughs> like, what, I'm not even kidding. People say I'm sex positive. So I sleep around and don't feel guilty. Is that what? Yeah. Like, yeah. Why, I, why didn't I learn that when I was in high Why couldn't that have been around when I was in high school? I know. Back then it was just you were a slut. And you were a bad. slut. You were a whore. But now it's sex so, positive. I'm sex positive. Oh, okay. Then. Because it sounds like when people say that, it sounds like they know something that I don't know. Like, like, <laughs> like, like they're more well-read than me or they're like, yeah. they learn more than I do. Or they're, they're more evolved than I am. And yeah. then I go, wait a minute. But then I go, then some of these guys that are into it, like I know a guy that's sex positive, who's like the biggest like whore I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, but not even like something that you aspire to be like, you're just like, you know, kind of a thing. I'm like, wait, what do you, what do you yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're just getting other girls that are sex positive. I, I don't know. I think the whole thing is kind of a scam, but uh, whatever. Who the sex positive that? thing is a, is a scam? I don't think it's a scam. I think it's a way. <laughs> it's something is like, I, I don't get it. Someone would have to break it down. It's a, it, again, it's, it's a squeaky, it's a squeaky wheel gets the oil thing because anything that you do, you can say, you're shaming me. It's like with Army Hammer talking about eating people's hearts and brains and whatever. He goes, don't kink shame. Now you're kink shaming. You can't ah. kink shame. So anything that you do, that's yeah, I mean, whatever. I mean, seriously, like, if I was in, like, if I, like Jeffrey Dahmer must feel like he got screwed. Like, like all these people in jail right now must, I mean, it's, well, it's crazy that like, you think about 20, I was thinking about this, where like marijuana is legal 
but Dr. Seuss isn't now. Like, like, oh, like, like we're getting rid of Dr. Seuss. But I mean, just what? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, and not even for the right reason. Well, I don't know. I haven't looked yeah, at Yeah, and then Dr. Seuss, because, because the kid is on top of a cage, and the cage is being carried by Asians. And I'm like, wait, we're at a point in society where we can't make fun of Asians? I thought that was, that was the last group we could make fun of. That was the last, yeah, Asian people always do that. When I was in college, and I, I hate to sound this, but as soon as like, there was like, you know how there's always a curve in class, a curve, yeah. where like, I don't know if they still do that, but like, if the whole class got like 60s and- the, Yeah, the bell you know, curve, yeah. Everybody would get an A, you know, because if everyone got it. As soon as I saw there was like more than five Asians, I'm like, this, this curve is fucked. Like, there's, <laughs> there's, there's no way. These kids are getting fucking A's. They're all in the front. They all have tape recorders. They're like, they're uh -huh. like, you know, we're up, me and my friends in the back, we're fucking trying to find ways to cheat. I'm like, we're, we're fucked. Like this this curve yeah. completely screwed. Uh, and that's not racist. That's a statistically accurate observation. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I know. So people are like, oh, we're not smart. Anyway, so uh, let's talk about some fights before <laughs> we get canceled. Uh, so UFC, they dropped Overeem and uh, over, well, like I said, they didn't resign Overeem and they didn't find Junior Dos Santos. I think that's a good thing for Dos Santos. He, he, he got knocked out four fights in a row. Uh, yeah. And he seems like a real nice guy. You know, not that Overeem doesn't, but for some reason, I think Overeem still has fight left in him. He won his last two out of three. His last fight, he looked like- That's he crazy to, to me. The Overeem cancellation is crazy to me. He looked like he didn't want to be there. Like, he looked like, the last fight, he looked like he didn't want to be there. He's such a weird fighter where he can literally beat anybody in the division. I mean, he, he had Stipe hurt. And then he, and then Cipe came back, but he's just one of those guys that's probably as a coach, you just want to fucking hit you. Cause you're like, you don't know which one is going to show up. And he decides yeah. somewhat sometime during the fight, he'll decide either I'm going to win or I'm going to quit. And it's not even like when yeah. he's like in a rear naked choke, it's like in minute one, he's just standing there going, I don't, I don't want to be here or I'm going to fuck this guy up. And it's not even. Yeah. I have, a, I have a theory about that. Cause how old is Overeem now? 30, 40. He's probably oh, he's almost 40, right? Probably. So, and his body changes a lot. I mean, that guy, I'm not saying he juices, oh, but he like. He got busted for horse meat or something. He got busted. Don't you think like maybe he lost that fight, a test came back from USADA, and they were like, hey, you're t you tested positive. Here are your options. You drop out of the promotion or. I don't think so because USADA is like, they're dicks. They just, they love to catch people. They, they're not, they're not. I think if it was Pride in 2000 or something, or Absolutely, or even like other promotions, they might say that. But with USADA, it's like, I feel like the UFC hates USADA because they, they're, they're, oh, they're, really? they're all about like, yeah, like they want to be the strictest testing in there and have the most cleanest athletes, but they don't want to deal with the fact of like somebody getting popped for some weird fucking thing that, you know, was in a smoothie and ate out of Jamba Juice, and now the guy can't fucking fight. You know, got so, a boner pill from a gas station. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Which some of it's true, and some of it's not. So, and like, I literally have been with fighters where I've offered them like a CBD or something, and he, they'd be like, they would take a picture of it, send it to their agent, take a picture of the back, and be like, hey, can I, can I take this? You know, or because so I don't. But that's a good. But my feeling is like I, I just have a feeling that Usada goes to Dana first. They go to the UFC first. Hey, we got these results, and then Dana then has to make a decision, right? Maybe so Dana probably goes, "Hey, if you drop out, we'll money. bury it." They're also paying him a shitload of money. Yeah, uh, he probably didn't test that well as far as like numbers. His last event, they probably said, "You know uh, what? This guy's is it really worth the squeeze?" He's a name. That's crazy in the heavyweight division. That many names. Yeah, but they put him up like he fought a guy that like wasn't even I forgot who he lost to, but it wasn't even like he wasn't even like he was an upper an upper guy, but he was an up up and coming guy, but it wasn't even like a huge name. But also, look, there's a guy that I want to see in Ryzen. I want to see Uberim. You know, the, I want to see the guy that like, you know, there are certain guys: Crow Cop, Overeem, Vitor Belfort. You know what? Like, as much as I want to see clean athletes, they were so good when they were dirty. And if they're, oh, yeah. if they're in an organization where everybody's dirty, like, or they don't care anymore, like Japan, like, fuck it. Yeah. You know? That'd be great. They, they could have, yeah, just call it like UFC, like super UFC. <laughs> everyone juiced up as possible. Yeah, I think it was called Pride. Uh, that really <laughs> yeah, was the situation. Um, all right, so jo John Jones um, and Adesanya are going back and forth. I guess Adesanya said, 
I don't even get Israel anymore because he's, he's fighting a 205. I think he's going to yeah. win. I think he's going to win. Then he says, I'm going to I'll, 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 I'll put money on that one. Uh, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Done. 50 bucks. I think that he's going to win because I think he's going to win. All right. Just, we'll, leave, we'll leave it at that. But then he's like, I'm going back down to 185. So what? Are you just going to take the belt and run? Like, that's just <laughs> – nobody – that's just – Fucked up. I mean, that's my point. He, he, he's at the he's at the Anderson Silva stage where he's so cocky and he has nothing but people kissing his ass all around him, telling him he's the goat. And I think he's like he's like Rocky Balboa in the beginning of Rocky Three. Man, I think he's getting ready to get some some Polish uh, fucking comeuppance coming up. I think so. I don't think this is the guy to do it though. Like I um, even Luke Rockhold, who fought him, said uh, said the guy is super strong and yada yada, and he he's hard to take down. And I was surprised. But he, he, he sees Izzy winning. And a lot of times, a guy that, like, beat you, you're, you think that, that you want them to win, and you're like, oh, they're going to win because yeah. it makes you look better, um, especially a guy like Rockhold. Uh, but I don't know. I, I think that this is not the guy to beat him. Now, look, who knows? Now, now, now at 185, now we have a problem because – so Darren Till is fighting with Tori, who is looking like a world beater. I mean, he basically – I thought he beat Izzy, or it was fucking close. Yeah, it was. And I think he wins this fight. And then Robert Whitaker is fighting Paulo Costa, um, who said he was drunk for his last fight. <laughs> <laughs> too much, I had too much wine. I had too much wine the night before. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I, I get it, <laughs> kind of. I, I, sometimes you don't want to admit that you lost because it just. Who That's a lame wine? excuse, man. I had too much wine. Yeah, especially it's very easy to be like I I power fucked four prostitutes the night before. It's just something like I had too much, I had too much Pinot. Especially for like a Brazilian, a Brazilian, it's like they're, they're, aren't they known for like drinking and partying and sex? It's like <laughs> too much wine, right? Like yeah, I did crystal meth yeah. the day of. I have a friend who did who did like crack the night before a fight and won. He won a Muay Thai <laughs> championship. My old trainer, Jimmy Jimmy Romero. Uh, I want to get him on the show. He actually uh, now. So I think that the Costa fight versus Whitaker, that's the fight I, w- I want to see the most because – Yeah, me too. I, I'm still – Costa's not- got a lot to prove right now. He's got a lot to prove, man. Yeah, and I, one fight, having a bad night and a fight like that, I, I'm not sold on he, how much he, he's lost in that fight. I know he got fucked up by Izzy. He got outclassed. He looked terrible. But who knows? You know, look at Nganu. Like, Nganu got fucking steamrolled by uh stipe then he looked terrible against the black beast and now yeah. he's right back to where he he should be he's fighting for the title by the way stipe stipe told me personally he said that uh ingana was the hardest hitter he's ever experienced in his life and i think that like literally he he actually is like in terms of like world records or something did dana white say he hits like a ford fiesta Dude, or something I mean, that that dude you know is you know, I've hung out with a lot of heavyweights, guys like Josh Barnett and some big guys. And normally, like, they got some, some fat on them. Even, like, Stipe, when he's not in training, you don't see, like, shreddedness. You see, like, I wouldn't say he's a dad bod. But he's, like, a big dude, you know? Yeah. Ben Rothwell. And Ganu looks like a shredded 135-pound really? black dude yeah. in a 265-pound body. It's like he might be, like, 4% body fat. Uh, yeah, he's like one of those like little superheroes that like enlarges with the fucking you know like Ant Man as he gets. Bigger. He came to the show and I, I made fun of him so much, saying he was like an Uber driver, or this and that. He came and after the show, he put me in a headlock, and then he like uh, <laughs> like invited me to his to like he had tickets to a fight. He's like, you come sit with me, sit with me. Like he was the nicest guy ever. He is that's amazing. Such a gentle giant. When did you hang out with Cipe? Oh, this is I did. He came to the Cleveland. Uh, uh, Pickwick's in Cleveland improv. Yeah. And then he, he had a podcast and he invited Jeremy and I went with him. And then we just kind of hung out as he was like on the phone with his, his fire sergeant. Cause he's the fireman. Oh, this podcast. He's 95. known for like not wanting to talk ever. I, I can't see yeah. the podcast. This was like by gunpoint or something. He's like, no, he's, there, there definitely, he had some support. He had a support system with his podcast. Okay. But he was like very nice and funny and laughed at the show and such a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, he came to my show too, and his brother looks like like uh, I don't know, like Greg Wilson. You know, like he just. <laughs> so I was like, "What is this twins?" You know, like it's I, exactly twins. Davido oh, and Schwarzenegger. 
and he was dying. I just destroyed his brother for like 20 minutes and, and he thought that was the funniest thing. And then Ben Rothwell was next to him and I'm like, oh, you met your wife on Farmers Only. I just killed all these fucking guys who <laughs> murder me. Uh, so this guy, Otman Azatar, you know who that guy is? So he's a guy that no. was like, he's undefeated, badass fighter. And then he got kicked out. Well, he got, cause like somebody, his teammate broke quarantine and like scaled the walls to like deliver him a bag in Fight Island. No one knows what it was in the bag, but everyone thought maybe it was like an IV or something. So they, they, they kicked him out. They said, you're done. They, they, you're not fighting. And then he said- They didn't know what the, was in the bag and they kicked him out? Yeah, because that like they had they you know they had to section everybody off. You couldn't you could not allow in this because of COVID, and his teammates yeah. scaled the wall to get in the bag, right? And yeah. no one knew what was in the bag, but he couldn't fight, so he didn't get cut from the UFC. The UFC kept him. I guess he's that good. He's at like ten and zero with like ten knockouts. He's like they're calling him like you know. So now it came out that according to him, it was potatoes that was in the bag. His his teammate was smuggling him potatoes. Uh, that's what he said. Can't they prove that? First of all, how, they knew that he climbed the wall. His, 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 they don't his have like video yeah. footage? Yeah, he, no, yeah, they have the footage of the teammate climbing the walls to get him a bag of potatoes. Uh, none of it makes any sense. Um, is, is that code for something? Because people were saying steroids, and then people were saying IV, people were saying cocaine. It was all these things of what was in the bag. Potato. Yeah. I, I mean... Couldn't you just like give somebody the bag to give to him? Like, why do you have to like throw the potatoes up to the, the, it makes no sense. Yeah. It sounds like it's code for something. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's going mean, to there's gonna be more coming out about that. There has to be. That's too crazy. No, and I wanted to be like, they found in the bag, like Luke Rockhold's chin or something. Like I was going to say that. <laughs> Rockhold's my friend and I think he would laugh at that. Uh, but he might be like, you motherfucker. He's uh, too busy having sex with 15 women as we speak to worry yeah, about that joke. Seriously. He's like, yeah, yeah. Now there was a, there was, he, he had sex. I had heard a rumor. He had sex with a woman who was like, like beyond hot, like just like, you know, beyond, beyond hot. And in front of all her, fr in front of all her friends, they were like giving him like instructions on what to do. And I <laughs> asked him, I go, I was sitting next to him on the award show. I go, Luke, is it true that you banged this girl in front of all her friends? And he looks at me and he pauses. He goes, not all her friends. <laughs> and I was like, that motherfucker. Like, perfect comic timing. Like, yeah, Luke Rockhold is a legend. He's a legend. Um, yeah. So, uh, He has yeah. a good career in porn looking, looking in the future. Jeez. But his fight career is done. Anyway, moving on. No, I mean, he's, he wants to come back. He's still right there. I mean, he's still right. I know he lost. You think so? Yeah. he's, he's he ranked? Still, I don't know. He hasn't fought in a while, so I don't know if he's still like actively ranked at all. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. So Colby Covington just texted me. By the way, he says he's, he's going to come on the show soon. I made a, I made a couple jokes about him. Um, and uh, what did you say? Uh, well, he's so there's a picture of him with like super hot um, Brazilian, like Pollyanna Viana, a fighter who's uh like way hot, like like beyond hot like and, and and like brazilian which is even funnier you know and and he like tweets it out and puts like like hearts around it so he's like uh like i guess they're like together and she's a, she's a, a, a smoke show so i go finally colby has some power in his hands and <laughs> and i i wrote that to him i texted him he's like dude you're the fucking best as he wrote so i, like, I love it have you, have you had any fighters, I'm sure this is a hack question, any fighters that just didn't have a sense of humor when you made fun of them? Because it sounds like most fighters do. Yeah, Anthony Johnson, uh, he, um, it was like right after like something when it happened, like he threw like a yoga mat at somebody at the gym and got kicked out. And we had a girl on the podcast, Cindy Dandois, that like had a huge crush on him. Like she just like was obsessed with him. And then it was like after some shit went down and I was like, oh, it was like, you know, oh, was Chris Brown taken or, or so, something that like to that extent. And <laughs> And then uh, she like didn't even get the joke. She's like from Belgium, but I put it on a podcast. And then he like wrote like really motherfucker, and then like 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 got mad. And then and then I'm like, that's not the guy you want. No, you. I mean that guy. That guy whose name is Rumble. There's By not way, a, is he back? He's back. He's in Bellator. Uh, there's not like a body part on that guy's body. I want to get hit with. Like, like yeah. I don't know where. <laughs> like 
<laughs> that dude like knocked out everybody. He like knocked out Arlovsky. He knocked out Ryan Bader so hard that Bader won his next nine fights. Like, like, <laughs> like after you get knocked out by him, like same with Arlovsky, like nothing could fucking fuck with you ever. That's how fucking. Yeah. So I, I called him and I'm like, yo, man, I'm sorry. Like I was out of pocket. Like I, I thought you would laugh. And he's like, and, and then he was like, yeah, it's all good. And I'm like, I'm like, I think she likes you. He goes, yeah, I know, but she's got like five kids. He said something funny. He's like, I saw that picture and I moonwalked away from my phone. <laughs> I get this picture of Anthony Johnson moonwalking away from his phone. Like that was like, was like a funny image to me. Um, yeah. So that was that. And then King Mo also, King Mo said like he got hit with like a back elbow or something and like, uh, like fell down in one of his fights. And I made a joke where another guy hit an elbow and I go, that elbow landed so hard. King Mo fell down. And then yeah. King Mo was like, yo, my cousin's a comedian in California. I might have him stop by your show and put some hands on you. I'm like, fuck <laughs> you, bro. Like, Jesus. Like, <laughs> so then I, but then we became like good friends after that. Uh, and That's Eddie, usually I, how it is probably, right? Yeah, I think that, I think, you know, look, I mean, I, I, it's hard. Like, so now that's why like I'll DM like, hey, you mind if I tweet this? Like, like even with like yeah. Tyron Woodley and his rapping, like I like Tyron Woodley. I actually like some of his rap songs, like for real. Like he's actually, I know people give him shit, but a lot of times people just take like a 10 second clip of him rapping and post it. Mm -hmm. And then like, be like, this is the worst thing ever. It's like, <laughs> it's like me putting my comedy on TikTok. It's like, yeah, exactly. like a 12 second clip. Someone's like, you bombed. I'm like, that was, a tw that was one joke. Like, well, let's be, let's be honest, Adam, you on TikTok, you could still get 10, 10 jokes in, in a TikTok clip. Well, I, I do that, right? But like, I put a clip up of me at the Laugh Factory in Vegas last week. And there was literally social distancing in the club. So there was like 35 people and they were all sitting beyond in the back. And I, yeah, I did that. I did the room. Yeah. And they're all wearing that. masks. You have to wear a mask unless you take a drink. And then so people were laughing, but like, it wasn't like the fuck so i put the clip up and someone's like man that crowd hated you i'm like so then i gotta like be like well and then can't. you sound like you're just making excuses yeah, yeah bro there was, yeah right it's like bro you know like paul costa well i had wine the night before it's, it's fucking it's like you can't win uh so uh so so uh khabib um oh by the way all right so dan hardy also before we get to um i'm, I'm actually waiting for what's name to come on the show i don't know where he is uh so um here we go Kroom? yeah not Kroom. he's uh supposed to come on first jimmy rivera hey man i got called in last minute to work he has to work all uh, right totally understand let's do it next week uh where does he work i um i think he's uh i think he owns a gym okay so yeah all right well there goes the one guest people don't realize when you rap podcasts like that's not like <laughs> well you know um, but all right, well, we have more news to talk about. Dan Hardy wants to come back and fight Nick Diaz. Me and Dan used to be training partners over at Legends. I love. I Dan remember, yeah, I remember when I trained with Dan Hardy at, at Legends too. Good guy, fucking great guy. Um, he's been retired forever though, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think it's a good fight for him, actually. Great fight. I mean, obviously Diaz has the advantage in the jiu-jitsu. Um, striking, I would give Hardy the advantage. I think. I mean, he he he. Like volume, at least striking. even volume, I would give to Nick Diaz. Yeah, um, but power, power. Yeah. Although I don't know, man. I mean, Nick Diaz also knocked out Paul Daly. He knocked him down. I oh, mean, Jesus Christ! For some reason, I was thinking Nate Diaz. No, Nick Diaz. Yeah, fuck Nick Diaz. By the way, who, who, longer, longer who do you think would win, Nick or Nate Diaz, in a fight? I think at one point it'd be Nick Diaz, but at this yeah, point, but I feel like now it'd be Nate. Yeah, I think it'd be. I Nate. I feel like Nick Diaz is like. I feel like it's a great fight for Dan now. Yeah, I think he's a yeah, Nick. Nick is a great fight for Dan. He'll win that. You think he'll win it? Yeah, I think Nick is like, I think Nick is a little bit like far gone, man. You know what I mean? Mentally, a lot. I mean, you saw some of his Instagram lives, and you're like, yeah, it's it's too bad they don't have like Instagram intervention where you could just like <laughs> go through the fucking phone and be like, stop. Yeah. Although I don't want to be the guy throwing intervention for Nick Diaz, though. By the way, I mean, I feel like. I feel like the intervention would lead to everyone just being laid out, you know, <laughs> and dude, I, tell you, I have a funny, well, so Nate Diaz, I'm, I'm in Vegas and Nate Diaz, but I'm at, which was like 2014. I just started MMA roasted and like, I see Nate Diaz and Nick at a, at a club and you can't miss them. Like they're yeah. not like, I mean, they're like incognito, but you can't miss them. If you, the scowl you know, is just everywhere. Dude, he's sitting, it's like two pit bulls, like chained to a fucking, 
like <laughs> just staring at everybody like and then and this is like a hollywood kind of club like it's everyone's having fun except for these guys they're, they're not having fun but but they kind of so then me and nate lock eyes and i'm like oh fuck like like who knows how many jokes i made about this guy yeah he goes, he goes you he's like come here he goes you a funny motherfucker and he, and he gave me like the biggest hug ever and then uh, he goes man I love, you make me laugh blah, blah. and he was so nice like i mean just we got to train together he wanted me to i'm like i'm not training with you ever uh <laughs> but, but but yeah man and then i'm like what do you think it could be and ben Askren, he told me like ben Askren like hung out with them and spent time with them and stalked him then talked shit about him but like he fucking and i was like i was like are you gonna fight khabib and i'm like I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I said something that's like, like, that guy's tough. He's like, they're all fucking tough. He was such a nice guy though. Like we talked for like 30 minutes. Um, and uh, he was just like, and we took a picture, right? And in the first picture, he's smiling. And he goes, let me take that again. And then, and then he frowned. Like he was pissed yeah, that he had a, like, he had a, a nice picture of him. <laughs> it's like the opposite of how most people take pictures. They want like, oh, should I go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, then, so then Nick walks by. And I go, hey, Nick. And Nick doesn't look up. Like, he just keeps walking. And he goes, it's okay. He doesn't talk to me either. Like, like, like Nate said that to me. <laughs> like, like, That's hilarious. I was like, this guy's... And, like, he'll jump on my Instagram live sometimes. It's only, like, four people. Which I Nick like... Will? Yeah. Which, like, I'll... I mean, not, like, in person. But, like, but like I'll, like, you know, whatever. And then uh, I'll be like, hey, um... But then he'll take over. Then everybody to ask him questions. Like it's no longer my live. It's just I'm I'm hosting a question and answer for Nate Diaz with like seven yeah. people. You know, like it's just thousands of. Which I, I mean, whatever. But he's so funny because uh, I go, I was you know the MMA awards. I'm like, hey Nate, you want to uh, present an award this year? He goes, fuck yeah, I want to win one too. But he wasn't even nominated. Like he hadn't fought <laughs> in three years. Like he just so then I, I pitched them. I'm like, hey, um, Nate Diaz wants an award uh could we just make like a nate diaz award and just give it to nate diaz like they were like there should well, be one right i mean for the most i don't know well, they did have the, the, B, the bmf award like the bad motherfucker award that's kind right. of on the diaz brothers right the ufc made one for him um so yeah so so nick so all right so he um also khabib right so khabib says he doesn't want to be famous anymore he you know and like i heard he's like beyond famous where he lives and i i can oh, kind I'm of sure and he goes, uh, every day I wake up in the morning, I started training, evening my body was exhausted, I had birth to limit. I just wanna have a life where I could get up at least a little bit of sleep before lunchtime, to live for yourself and not devote 100% to sports. Which, you know, I think that's pretty cool. I mean, admirable, I understand that. I mean, the guy was wrestling bears at two years old. Like what? Yeah, you know, he's Russians, are the, Russians are the best, man. They're so far removed from the Hollywood bullshit and all the hoop and you know, hubbalo. I think it's amazing that he's like that. And, and I'll, as a fighter, that's what everyone looks up to as well. And I you think know? people don't realize that like, when you do Sambo at that level or wrestling, and I think the same goes for Cejudo in some ways. When you, even like when Johnny Hendricks started wrestling at like age five, like he didn't do like wrestling, like, oh, I'm just gonna take it to wrestle. Like he was like a state champ at like seven in Oklahoma. You know, he <laughs> won like, a, the, like the states four years in high school. Dude, it's, when I say it's a job, it's way harder than a fucking job. Like when yeah. college wrestling at Oklahoma State, when you're a national champion, and then when you go to the UFC, so it's like these guys have not stopped working. They've yeah. been working from five to 30 or whatever hold he is. So he's probably punched a clock in his childhood. He never really had time to grow mm -hmm. emotionally, probably. Did. I mean, he has a wife, but who knows? I mean, like, why not? Like, I don't think people realize. I think sometimes, you know, you, when you do when you do too much, it, you end up like beyond depressed when it's over. Because yeah, of course. You have nothing left, and you also don't know how to be a human being. Plus, every single person, every except for maybe like three people in this in this guy's life, is asking him, "When's your next fight? When are you going to fight again?" Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. that's you, you know, because people don't know what to say. They want to be nice. I think they enjoy that. And the fighters are probably just like, fuck, man. Like, I know. I'm not just a fighter, you know? And then when people lose, you know, so. So what do you think, what do you think the future is for Khabib? Do you think he's coming back? Do you think, I mean, he's just, if that's what he wants, go retire to Bali where no one knows who the fuck you are. Just hang out under a sun I think chair. And I think he supports probably like 50 people, you know, he yeah, probably, a whole village, like, probably, probably yeah. supports a whole village. You know, I think he probably has like, 
you know, I know his dad was the coach and he, I know he's coaching people kind of, but doesn't want even want to be a full-time coach. Yeah. He's got like three cousins in the UFC, a brother in the UFC. A, 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 I think that he can't leave and I, it's got to be hard, especially if like, you know, when he became a fighter, he didn't sign up to be a celebrity. He, he just no wanted way. to be a fighter. And it kind of reminds me of this next guy who, uh, I don't know if you heard of the whole thing with like uh, Chimaev. You hear what happened with oh. him? Oh, yeah, so, yeah. He, he, uh, he got COVID and he retired. Uh, but, you know, the guy's like 3-0 and in the UFC. He's he wanted, first, first he wanted to fight every, every week. He's also like a wrestling national champion from Sweden. Isn't he Khabib's, isn't he Khabib's like protege, basically? Yeah, they were calling Khabib 2.0, right? So he retires. Yeah. And then Dana White says, no, he's not retired. He's just on all kinds of steroids that are making him go fucking crazy. You know, so now... This is what people don't realize in these other countries. So now the, the head of Chechnya, right? The head of state, this guy, Ramzan Kadyrov. Now he was the guy in real sports that says there's no homosexuals in my country. And <laughs> allegedly they're throwing them off buildings if they are. Like there's some crazy things going on in Chechnya. Yeah. I, I know a kid that yeah. I used to coach, his family like fled Chechnya and like, he was like the best kid in the league and he never even wrestled before. It's just, it's a different breed of a kid over there personally. Yeah. So he mm -hmm. says, uh, he's assuring his followers, the UFC welterweight star is not retiring and will end on an appearing to announce his retirement after he said he's retiring. He said he wrote on Instagram, I guess he has an Instagram. He remains and will fight to the end. Wrote <laughs> Dyer, a staunch MMA supporter. And he is, he actually flies in fighters, UFC champions to come like, meet them he gives them a lot of money to fly there like wrestle with oh his buddies God. and then leave um because i know some guys that did that and got like insane amounts of money to do that uh and so are they, though, connected, are they connected to russia at all i think it, it's like the old it's like the old it's russia like part of russia yeah yeah he goes, like, uh, like putin comes into his door flanked by kgb like we have to have a discussion with you about that. yeah he goes he goes uh he goes he's the guy's been hit by the u.s with multiple sanctions for suspected human rights violations including targeted violence against gay people uh during he goes during a conversation he says he realized he goes he talked to chemayev he realized how important his career is and for every chechnyan and he promised to make an effort to recover as soon as possible in the future, he will fly to the Republic where he will complete. A so he's going there to do his rehab, not the U.S. Told him a training camp, start training. And this means that he's not leave. He remains and will fight to the end. Yeah, it's a different world out there. Uh, I yeah. think people realize in the U.S. how lucky they have it because, like, that, that what wouldn't happen. You're not going to have Joe Biden <laughs> tell a guy he has to keep fighting. Uh, you, no. you know. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> what's up, guys? I got some good news. Three title fights are taking place this weekend during UFC 259 in Las Vegas. This is a can't-miss event. And DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of UFC, is giving you a shot at huge cash prizes. For this weekend's fight, DraftKings is offering all players a shot at millions of dollars total prizes. Yes, millions of dollars in total prizes. If you haven't tried it yet, Fantasy MMA is easy to play. Just pick six fighters, stay underneath the salary cap, and pile up points for advances, takedowns, and more. There is no better way to put your MMA knowledge to the test than to compete for a shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Plus, don't forget about basketball and hockey, where DraftKings has even more money up for grabs throughout the week. DraftKings is safe. It's secure and reliable. Okay, you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. Here's the call to action. Download the DraftKings app now. Use promo code ROASTED to get a shot at millions of dollars in total prizes throughout the week. That's promo code ROASTED to get a shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. So speaking of a guy who keeps fighting, uh, this guy got hit so hard last week, he's now sideways still. Uh, he's actually, uh, Ke oh, so Kevin Kroom, how are you, man? I'm doing good, man, how about you? Good, man, good, good, good. Honored to have you on the show. Uh, you are, you are uh, such a badass. Um, <laughs> obviously the fight didn't go your way last week against Bruce Leroy, but you fought to the end, you showed a ton of heart. What do you think went wrong? What could you have done better? 
Fuck, man. A whole bunch, man. Uh, fuck, dude. It's kind of like I just went out there and forgot how to fight, man. I uh, I don't really know how to explain it, man. It's like I got like caught in a tunnel almost. And like I was like, fucking tunnel vision, man. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't really... I don't really know how to explain it. Uh, definitely, definitely not not how I fight normally. You know, uh, fuck, man, it, this 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 shit happens sometimes. You know, dude, I, I can't tell you how many bad nights I've had on stage, uh, and we'll continue to have. Uh, it just um, now it seemed like uh, your corner was telling you that you weren't setting up the takedowns. Uh, you're a great wrestler. Uh, was it one of those things where you just like I know you have ADHD. You get super focused, and you were like, "I'm taking this fucking guy down, no matter what. I don't care what I gotta do." Fuck, man! I I, don't, I wasn't really setting anything up, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I got in my head that I just had to take him down, and uh, uh, man, I didn't fucking punch him at all. I fucking forgot how to fight. Like, I forgot yeah. how to throw punches. You know, Kevin, like, yeah. Would it, would it have been better if you smoked weed before the fight? Be honest. <laughs> Uh, I mean, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I'm not sure. I I, uh, I hadn't smoked for a couple months, so I mean, I can't really. No, his last on. fight was a no contest because of that, Bill. He I know. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It's crazy, man. That was, that was, such, that was such bullshit. But you um, you you kept you kept the money though. The fight of the night money, right? No. He yeah, yeah. No, no, he didn't get fight of the night. Uh, the other uh, guy, Rivera, got it. Performance of the night. Oh, oh, oh! You What's got the it. The difference between performance of the night and no, fight of the uh, night. The first, the first, the first oh, fight. Oh, I got. the first fight, you got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The first yep. fight, yeah. Oh, oh, good, 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 good. Okay, you, uh, you don't have as tough a fight. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> now, now, uh, now, now, Bruce Leroy was, um, his wrestling looked pretty good. His takedown defense. Were you surprised at how good his, teeth, his defense was? Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, I, I suppose we, we knew that, uh, that he, he was going to be pretty good. He's going to be pretty good, have good hips. Man, like I said, dude, I just kind of shit the bed. Like uh, all, of, all of the, all of my fucking fight knowledge went out the window, and I just fucking, I just fucking sucked, man. Well, <laughs> you first know? of all, you didn't suck, okay? You <laughs> had 15 minutes with a fucking great fighter, yeah. and and you had him, you had him rocked a couple times. The first, the first round, you had you hit him a couple times square. Uh, you you had some great counters. Yeah, I mean, you had his back. There was one time in the second round. He had you in a triangle that looked deep, and then you just like walked out of it. But what, 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 what did you put your finger up his ass? Like how did how did that happen? What happened? Uh, no, nah, man. Uh, like uh, it was tight, but it was never it was never one of those things where I was like started to go out. You know, um, that's just some shit we work all the time, and it always gets done to me, man. You can't triangle anybody at our gym now, James. James has showed showed some shit to get out of it, and uh, it, it fucking worked finally for me. <laughs> All right, tell us what what did, what did James show you? Uh, <laughs> um, like uh, a lot of normal triangle defense is posture up and like get big, and like when you posture up like that, that gives them a handle to hold on to. When you posture yeah. up, this yes, you have your neck, so you're supposed to just stand up and have no neck and they got nothing to hold on to and it, it, it worked wow oh, nice that that was awesome that yeah i was wondering now it seemed like you you uh you, you had his back but hey listen look it's okay you're you're one and one in the ufc uh i mean you know it just you had a you had a, a, a kind of a rough night now i know that marquez after he won he called out miley cyrus uh <laughs> it, it was all over the internet i actually called him that night and i was like dude she responded were you going to call out like Demi Lovato or were you planning on calling out anybody? No, nah, man. Uh, you know, I, I was going to do something more my own style, but fuck man, the world will never know. <laughs> oh, come on. What were you going to do? Oh uh, man. I, I don't, I don't know. I didn't have anything planned like that. I, I, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants type of guy, you know? Got it. Got yeah, it. I, have, I have a question for you too. What, the, the fight with Roberts, right? Everyone calls that a guillotine choke that you put on them. I've never seen a guillotine choke where you had. It's a ninja. Body. What's it's that? Called a, it's called a ninja choke. A ninja choke. Yep. Is that your specialty? That was a dope uh, choke, man. I'd never seen that in UFC before. Yeah, man. Uh, no, that's not my specialty at all. It just fucking, dude. It just. It had. I mean, obviously, I've been training a long time. I uh, I can pull stuff up, but I mean, I've done it. I've done it in practice, but you know. Not very often. <laughs> yeah, that's why you had the nunchucks on for your uh, 
press conference, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm cartoons and ninja shit. That's what I'm about. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, um, you were 20 and 0 as an amateur, they said. Um, yeah, I was. <laughs> uh, what, what, how come so many amateur fights? Uh, man, I did it all in 14 months. Uh, I had my first two amateur fights without training at all. And, uh, I just fought as much as I could. And, uh, uh, after 14 months and after winning 20 fights, it was kind of time to go pro. I wish I would have held off a little bit longer. Maybe, maybe had a little bit better training, but you know, it is what it is. And people here in the Midwest, we fight all the time. There's fights every week. So, I mean, it just kind of happened, you know? Yeah. I was about to say, you call yourself a hillbilly. How many of those amateur fights were with family members? <laughs> <laughs> well, count those. I, I have a lot more. <laughs> nice. Now, who do you think wins this week, by the way? Uh, a couple, a couple fights. You think, uh, you think uh, Israel or Jan? Yeah, man, uh, I'm I'm an Izzy fan. I I, uh, I I think he he's the man. So I think uh, I think Izzy's gonna pull it out. Got it. Now, what's up with Izzy's dog? There's videos of him spitting uh, food into his dog's mouth. Another one where he grabbed his dog's cock for a second. Uh, <laughs> any I don't know. That? I I have no comment on that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, now, um, Aljamain Sterling versus Peter Yan. Who wins this one? Yeah, man, I think Al, I think Al can get it done, man, for sure. Uh, Aljamain, I mean, Yan, Yan's a, a bad motherfucker, so we'll see. But, yeah, I think, uh, I think Aljamain gets it done. Yeah, I hope so. I really hope so. I feel like, I think, though, too, but Yan's lost one fight to Magomed Magomedov, and he beat that guy. That was six years ago. It's yeah, man, it's when you can't even announce somebody's name, that's a tough motherfucker. <laughs> That's like half of Dagestan, right? Uh, right, yeah. Oh, I fought there. <laughs> you, you, you fought in Dagestan? Yeah, I did. And fuck, man, I wish I wouldn't have. <laughs> when, when did you fight over there? Uh, shit, like 2014, something like that. 15? 2015. What, what organization? Uh, uh, fight Nights. Who did you it's fight? Like, it's like the big, big, uh, I don't know, big Russian thing. Uh, I fought... Uh, Fuck, Razul Mirev, Razul Mirev. Uh, when I fought him, he was like fifteen and zero, fucking savage. He, uh, he. The only reason you don't know who he is is because he went to prison uh, for killing a man, and uh, he was in Russian prison for a few years, and then they let him out on manslaughter. Uh, so he can't get a he can't get a passport. He's a fucking savage. Wow, beast. Fucking Google that guy, the Black Tiger. <laughs> oh boy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you don't do against, do very good against against black people or tigers. <laughs> so um, now, um, now, what is it like though? Do they have like nice hotels over there? Do they treat you right? Or, like so, <laughs> so we're like driving through the streets. And there's like gay guys with AK forty sevens in the streets, and like we pull up to the 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 place where we're staying, and it looks like a prison. There's like twenty foot high walls, guard towers, and me and my coach look at each other like, "Fuck, what have we gotten ourselves into?" Yeah. And they, they open the gates, and then. Once you get inside, it's like a fucking nice ass resort, like on the fucking Black Sea. It was really nice inside, but on the outside, it looked like a prison. Yeah. Were there any hot Russian girls that after the, the fight came out? I, I, did not, I did not see any, any Russian women. And by the way, <laughs> be careful because we're talking about Russia. It's like the hub of sex trafficking. So we say girls, Russian women. Oh, were there yeah. Russian, Russian women Russian there? Right. Yeah, I got right. I did yeah. not see any Russian women. Uh, the ring girls, the ring women they had there were wearing like full full dress like you couldn't even see their feet they were like clothed head to toe it was oh pretty wild God. that's that's crazy well, yeah wow that's yeah it's like muslim ring girls or something were, yeah were, were, were people yeah, whistling or, or are people like excited by this or they just no, I, I believe so i don't believe so I, I, everybody was pretty subdued <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah was that, the, was that the craziest place you ever fought uh yeah i fought in kazakhstan kazakhstan too but uh that was a little bit better experience for me <laughs> uh yeah yeah it was, it was pretty nuts there for sure what was that like was it like like how it is in, in like borat or no <laughs> no no it wasn't man I, I had a fucking blast first time i ever rode in a bentley i did fucking okay. did donuts on a mountain in, in a bentley and during the snowstorm uh fucking fell in love a couple times there were some beautiful women there <laughs> wow uh good lord yeah 
Good for you, man. Good for you. By the yeah. way, you know if someone has a Bentley in Kazakhstan, that they make a living by murdering people. <laughs> don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Like, the worst car I saw was, like, a Beamer. Like, oh, every, really? Like, yeah, man, they got oil money there. Like, fucking yeah. everybody had for sure. It was wild. I went to one of the craziest clubs I've ever been to. Like, it was fucking nuts, man. Well, what happened there? Uh, well, like I said, I fell in love, you know? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, man, dude, it was just wild. It was fucking huge. It was, like, bigger, probably bigger than any club I've been to in the States. Fucking people are wearing, you know, like, fucking Gucci, Prada, Burberry all over. Like, dude, there's fucking money there, dude. Any of those stand countries got oil money, you know? Yeah, were, you wearing, were you wearing camo and, uh, like, overalls or no? I'm pretty sure I was wearing, I was wearing sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, now, who do you think wins, Dominic Cruz or Casey Kenny this week? Uh, man, man, I hope Casey Kenny does. <laughs> Why? I, uh, yeah, uh, dude, I don't know, man. Like, I, I'm just not a huge fan of Dominic Cruz anymore. It's just like he just fucking talks too much, you know. I've had like a bunch of people talking shit to me because I say that. <laughs> I got this guy who's fucking hounding me online because I lost and I fucking said that I didn't like Dominic Cruz. And so he's like, ah, oh, blah, blah, you're going to get cut. Don't talk about Dom like that. I'm like, bro, like, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings by saying I didn't like your friends, you know? But dude, like, just with the whole like him fucking talking shit to the referee. You know, and being like, oh, he smelled like alcohol and cigarettes. I don't know, man. Like, and then he's like still even now saying it was all, all the ref's fault for him losing the fight. I don't know, man. I'm just kind of over that. It's not like I, I disrespect the guy. I think he's a great fighter. I just, I just, you're I'm entitled, over it. You're entitled to your opinion. You get it. Now, does, uh, <laughs> does Megan Anderson have a shot? She trains with you, right? Yeah. She yeah, she does. Yeah, and she's my teammate, and I'm 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 on the Megan train all the way. Let's fucking go. All right. So Do you think we should make that bet in Vegas on DraftKings? The odds are crazy. Should we make that bet? Well, she, she's I mean, a minus. She's like a plus eight hundred underdog. What is it? A minus. What's the minus is underdog? Yeah, uh, plus. Oh, so she's plus like a plus eight hundred. I mean, yeah. so you've been watching her in the gym. You've been watching her train, watching her spar. Talk to us. Like, why is she gonna win? Uh, man, dude, I mean, she's a bad, she's a bad bitch, that's for sure, uh, she's got fucking reach, you know, um, she's fucking tall, man, she's fucking, her knees and elbows are fucking vicious, uh, for sure, like, uh, uh, uh I mean, obviously, you know, N Nunez is one of the best there is, she's fucking amazing, but, uh, man, I, I think maybe you can catch her, for sure. Now, is she going in there sparring with, like, dudes? Or guys yeah, yeah, there? She, doesn't, she doesn't train with any girls. There any girls, and she's holding her own with the guys, like the pro UFC fighters. Yeah, yeah. Have you trained with her? Yeah, yeah, we train all the time. <laughs> who, who, who wins, you or her? Uh, well, I mean, I'm a little bit better than her on the ground. However, man, you, you got to get hit to get her on the ground. And uh, oh, I mean, this black guy ain't from her, but still. <laughs> wow. She, she's dapped me up a few times for sure. Yeah, no, good for the, you know what? I'm starting to think this is like one of those situations where she's such an underdog. And she's got the power, and you guys are all you guys all believe in her. She got James Krause behind her. The other girl just had a baby. Well, she didn't, you know, have the baby. She had right, but still, but delivery. still, with the baby crying, that doesn't I make the life. You know no, what I mean? No, no. I mean, thank God I don't know what that's about. Uh, <laughs> you know, she's she's married to another fighter. Uh, so you know, maybe maybe there's who knows, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody's, nobody's invincible, man. Nobody's invincible, you know? I feel like, like Amanda Nunes is like Stipe. Everyone keeps expecting her to lose, and she just doesn't lose. You know what yeah, I mean? That was like how Connor was for a while, and then that didn't go too well. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, and she I mean, has that, lost before. I mean, she's lost to a, like Kat Zingano. She, uh, she, it's not like she's never lost before. That was yeah. a long time ago. When was yeah, the last time she lost? It's been it's a while. Been a while. It's, it's been it's a long been a while. Time. Yeah, man. I mean, for sure, uh, it's a game of odds, you know. And like, I mean, eventually the fucking odds won't be in your favor, man. You know, we, now, we how, all. How's Megan's headspace? Because sometimes she gets too caught up in like people talking shit to her online, or she. Yeah, yeah definitely. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> she gets a little bit, you know, in her feelings, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, have you guys yeah. to, like stay away from the internet? Go off. Go off <laughs> yeah, quit reading the comments for yeah. sure. I, 
I just learned what that's like. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, man, uh, last time I saw her was on Monday and she, she seemed, she seemed really good. She seemed like she's, uh, she's doing really well. So for All sure. Right. Fuck. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> He's not telling us too much. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's not, there's not, there's not too much to say, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we, we train together. I see her every day at the gym, but, other than yeah. that, you know, that's it. Like, I mean, I love her. I think she's a great, a great person. And uh, man, I mean, I, I, I got, I got faith in her. I got two questions for you, Kevin. One yeah. is, do you think that UFC should legalize weed? Well, that's technically, technically, they did. Uh, USADA, USADA, and the UFC have now like they changed their stance on it. Uh, but the thing oh, is, this is this year? Yeah. 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 But th that doesn't matter uh, because the state commissions are the one. It's like USADA didn't have a problem with me. It was Nevada State Commission. And uh, Nevada State still hasn't changed their stance on it. And to be honest, they probably won't because they're making money off of it. Us uh -huh. fighters that they pop with for weed are paying them money. And who likes to make less money? You know what I mean? Like, it's uh -huh. garbage Immediate. because it's legal in Nevada. Like, it's fucking bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. But It's crazy. No, 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 Kevin. Do you have a girlfriend or a wife? I do not. Thank God. <laughs> now, are you, are you, are you, are you getting a lot of ass, or what's going on? <laughs> I, uh, I do pretty well for myself. <laughs> so you live in, you live in Missouri, right? Yep, yep. You're in the UFC. You're a good-looking guy. Your room's a mess. You gotta clean up that room. Uh, I'm yeah. in my dad's garage at the moment. You didn't use but... that, that that bonus money for a house cleaner, apparently. Yeah. yeah. I'm in my dad's garage, but my room isn't much better looking. Oh, that's a little, all right, that's a little strange, but okay. So, okay, so you're in your dad's garage. Are you on <laughs> Tinder or Farmers Only or uh, Soul Swipe? <laughs> I, am, I am not, I'm not on any of the dating apps because, uh, like, I feel like when you're on all the dating apps, uh, I, like, the guys have to sell their self to the girls, and it's like, I, I'm, like, pretty great, and I don't really need to sell myself, so. <laughs> All right. Speaking of pretty great, uh, Kevin, your old uh, sparring partners here, uh, Heather Joe Clark. You know Heather, right? I do know Heather. Yeah. She said she was very excited about you being on the show. Uh, our other guest just canceled too, so we had two out of four cancel. That's why I told you to come earlier. Uh, but Heather Joe Clark is here, who just sure. came back from doing a toad, right? You had, a toad. I did a toad. No, Adam. All right, all right what, what's up, girl? All right, all right. You got you just got all right. So if you guys don't know Heather, former UFC fighter, Invicta fighter, retired, amazing person, vegan, humanitarian, beautiful woman, played hockey in college, lots of issues, but that's okay. Jewish, very Jewish, a little neurotic, uh, dating Connor Hewn, uh, and runs Tenth Planet over in Colorado Springs. Um, lots of tattoos. Denver. Uh, Denver. Denver. Denver and has a win has lots of wins win over Rowdy Beck uh some other some other big wins Bellator fighter UFC fighter she's done everything uh did I miss anything Heather no Kroon was at my last fight I was I was yeah. Vic, heck yeah we got and, uh, we got pizza afterwards it was yeah. delicious and remember the waitress yeah I do I do <laughs> I'm a wrestling coach I don't know I don't know what I teach them I just get in there and I go yeah, she was wild. It's true, Adam. Our 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 waiter at this place, this pizza place, was a um, a wrestling coach. I said, "What's your favorite takedown?" She goes, "Oh, no, no." She goes, I don't know. I just like to change levels and shoot. <laughs> wow, that, that that's that's exactly what Kevin did his last fight. So that's good. <laughs> I, 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 so I'm, just, I'm just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hey, so buddy, I can take it, man. <laughs> so 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 Heather, you just got back from Mexico, right? Uh, and, and you, uh, it was an enlightening experience. Uh, you did some TRT or mushrooms or DMT. Okay, okay, okay. Like, what? All right. Talk so, to me. Kum, you don't know this story, so I'm glad you're here because you're going to hear it for the first time before everybody else does. Heck and yeah. You've known each other for 10 plus years. So, yeah, Kroon was there. Uh, so some of the stuff I'm going to talk about, he was actually there. You may know or know stuff that some of these other people don't know, but... So I just went to Mexico and I did Ibogaine and um, Toad, which is uh, five five meo DMT. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, you did it too, Kevin. Uh, I mean, I'm a Toad, but I've I've done some DMT. <laughs> okay, sorry. 
Go ahead. I'm, I'm dying to lick the toad, so keep going. So, so you smoke it. Um, uh, they, they excrete the, they like squeeze it, they excrete it, they put, they dry it, and then you smoke it. Um, so the Ibogaine, I mean, I'm less than a week out. Like I did it last Friday and then the toad on Sunday and I'm, I'm still fucked up from it. Let's just say that. Like it was like the crazy, craziest experience. I was so sick, but let me like, I'm going to pour my heart and soul out and yeah. I appreciate, uh, Adam, you giving me this, um, space to do this because a lot of people are going to want to hear my story. And instead of me having to say it over and over again, I'm going to just say it all right now. And Kroom's going to be here to hear it. And I appreciate you supporting me, Kroom. Um, Always. Bill, thank you. But um, so I went there in hopes that I was going to heal my brain. So Ibogaine has been known more commonly to heal um, addiction for people who have opiate addiction, heroin addiction, things like that. That's what it's more commonly known for. But it also has been more recently known to help with brain trauma. And so a lot of veterans, this group, especially this place where I went, um, sees a lot of veterans. And, and the, the four guys I did it with were veterans, combat vets. Um, so it helps with just all kinds of things. But it's, a, it's no joke. It's, it's this, this medicine, medicine is like no joke. So, so that's why I go down there. And uh, we get to this house. And it's like this four-story house. And... Um, there's some facilitators, there's a doctor, they have you like do an EKG the night of, um, so make sure your heart's okay. And then they have you hooked up to an EK monitor, EKG monitor the whole time. Like this is some serious shit, right? To make sure you're all right. Um, and everything's good. So we do like a fire ceremony where we burn it, burn away like all the stuff we want to release. And then they give us our pills and everyone is dosed differently based on their weight and their situation. And I was given a pretty heavy dose of like 800 milligrams, which was, I think probably they said the most they've ever given a woman. Um, but I, you know, I have some brain trauma and so I wanted to heal. So boom, I take it, I go down, I go upstairs and there's this room and there's like five beds, like queen size beds and there's lots of space. Everyone's got their monitors hooked up and you lay down and all of a sudden, about 10 minutes, you hear this buzzing going on, like like uh, as if a generator had just turned on in the bathroom, maybe even closer to me, and like this zzz, zzz, buzzing. And then there's like these images flashing in front of my eyes, and the first image that I get is like this water, like, I'm, like as if I'm going scuba diving, and I'm going under the water, and I see water, and I see a dock, and I see people at the top of the dock, and like I'm just like, I guess I'm drowning, but I don't feel scared or I don't, I'm just like, whoa, that's weird. You know, like maybe that's some past life shit or something like not really sure what that's about. And then there's just like images popping up that don't really mean anything. And then I'm like, maybe I can like decide what I want to see. Right. So I'm like, well, um, going into this, I really wanted to reconnect with my coach, Robert Fallis. And so I, I thought of Robert and like pictures were like pop up of Robert and I just remember like smiling, like, oh, cool, like there he is. And then I realized, but they're just images. They're not like him. Like, I want to see him. I want to talk to him, you know? And so I like kind of got sad. And then I just started seeing images and like, I can't even remember the images. It's so crazy. And you'll know why, because the next part's pretty crazy or not crazy, but difficult. And then images would pop up and I'd be like, oh, okay, I get it. And then images and I'm like, oh, and it was like, um, like a collage, but just of random things. And then I was like, uh oh, like, oh, then I, then I, uh, I started spinning and Aubrey Marcus talks to Joe Rogan about his Ibogaine experience. And he says, when he started spinning, he said to make it stop and you could. And I was like, all right, make it stop. And I could. And then it would like start spinning again. And I'd be like, stop. And it'd stop which was really crazy because if I never listened to that podcast, I don't know if I would have had that notion to do that, which is thank you, Aubrey Marcus. Um, so then I'm like sitting there and then I'm like, uh Oh, like I feel nauseous. So then I get up and I start throwing up 
And that was probably about 30 minutes, 45 minutes into this experience. And I didn't stop throwing up for 12 hours. Whoa. Like, like, Whoa. like holding the bowl and you're seeing like tracers. So like the lights, everything is just like, like you can't see straight. And at one point I was laying there and I like, I could taste the medicine, you know, it was like, I could see I was throwing up the medicine. And nobody's with you and you're, and you're stuck in the room. No, oh, no. So there's this lady. She was taking care of me the whole time. Like every time I threw up, she would give me a new bowl. Mexican she, woman? Like, it, was a Mexican woman? it was a Mexican woman? A Mexican woman, but she spoke English. Okay. She was like, you know, in her late, the mid thirties and just like holding my hair and like giving me tissues and then carrying me to the bathroom while I'm like holding the bowl and she like, she's holding me and that, cause you can't open your eyes. It, you can't see, you just literally can't see everything's like, so you're just like trusting. And then she'd put me on the toilet and I was like going, throwing up as I'm like pooping and throwing up and like having just like, like scrubbing out my insides, like my stomach still to the, this day, you know, six days later, it feels like, like I've done the biggest wor ab workout because I just had so much, right? So 12 hours and like by six o'clock in the morning, I'm like asking for nausea medication, you know, and she's like, no, you can't do it for 12. It's gotta be 12 hours. And so like the next two hours, you know, I'm trying not to drink water. I'm just trying, but I'm still just every, every, every couple of minutes, just dry heaving, just in agony, right? Just horrible. And I'm trying and like, and I think during this time where I, the vision stopped and like the, the throwing up, I was still seeing things and thinking things, but I was so consumed by the, the nausea. Like I'm just sick thinking about it right now. It was so difficult. So pretty much stayed in bed all day, Saturday, uh, ate a little bit Saturday night and then went back to sleep Saturday night and then Sunday morning um, they wake us up pretty early and we do like a meditation to like calm our nerves and they tell us how the medicine the toad uh, 5-MeO DMT is going to work and how to take it and all how they're going to administer it and it's done individually in that same room and I, I decide I want to go second so they gave me the option being the only female by the way there were female facilitators and supporters, but I was the only female doing it. So I got to go second. And the first guy like came up to do my laundry during the time you were like, they try to keep us um, on the fourth floor and the first floor so that they, we couldn't hear each other or what was going on during the ceremony or during the, the toads experience. So, but I happened to hear the guy going before me screaming like, ah! like, that's it. Like, and, 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 and it sounded terrifying, but he was screaming joy. He was screaming like, I get it. Yes. <laughs> and he was just like, like in, in, like he found God is, is basically what happened. And it, after I found out, but like, it was still like, okay. And I'm still feeling sick from the Ibogaine and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, I, I can't like, this, this is the opportunity to heal. It's my time. I'm going to fucking do it. So I go up there and there's the ladies there that had been taking care of me the whole night. And I happened to bring a card. Like I knew I was going to need to give someone a card. So I brought a thank you card. I, she was a lady. I gave it to, I gave her a thank you card. And I sat there and she, she gave me a little hit, which like tiny little bit just to kind of let my body feel it. And I saw some colors and then I breathed out and she put this pipe to my mouth and then it's got like one of like a crack pipe, I guess, yeah. a little glass on the end, like a little, not a bowl, but like a, a vial. What? Like a flask, like a flask. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Like a vial. Yeah. And then they like torch it. The other guy's like torching it and she says, all right, breathe in and you breathe for like 10 seconds and then you hold for 10 seconds and then she just lay you lay back and blow it out after the 10 seconds and i felt my body like 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 almost melt but like just dissipate like like everything just left but then it like came back and i felt this pressure on my chest like a a, a ton of 
you know, bricks just like pushing my chest. And she told me before, like, you're going to feel a moment where you can't breathe. And I felt like I couldn't breathe. And I was trying to breathe. And it was so much pressure. And I kept saying, trust, trust, trust. You're okay. You're okay. Trust, trust, trust. And then I just felt it dissipate again. And I felt like I, like the, I could hear the music, but I, I just felt like I, myself just go, <laughs> you know, just go and like, all right, just let it go. And then wah, came up, of course, again, to throw up and kept my eye shades on. Um, so I'm not That's seeing awful. anything, but I'm trusting that this lady's going to like catch whatever's coming out. And I'm spinning and I'm, I throw up a little bit, but not much. But I'm like dry heaving and I'm crying and I'm shaking and she's just holding me and she's got my hair back and she's got her hand on my back and she's just like sending me this love and this like motherly like taking care of and wiping my my spit from my mouth just like the mom I never had and I was thinking about and this is the the shitty part I was thinking about an abortion that I had um right at the beginning of my career when uh I was in Albuquerque and Kroon was down there at the same time. And was it, was I was supposed baby? to fight. What? Was it his baby? <laughs> no, okay. it was not his baby. Okay. Um, I, I was supposed to fight Raquel Pennington for my amateur debut. I never ended up having an amateur debut because of this. It was in Castle Rock, and I was supposed to fight for the main event and um, weighed in and everything at the, at the venue, um, going to fight and I give you a pregnancy test. Right. Oh, wow. And Crazy. I couldn't believe it. I went to the hospital because I was like, this is wrong. You know, I got to go get a blood test cause I didn't believe it. And sure enough I was. And, and then I went back to the venue. Um, and that's something like I didn't, like the people that knew and I crew, did you know that? Do you remember that happening? I do. So not a lot of people knew about that, but a few people did obviously from the gym because I didn't end up fighting. Um, Chris Luttrell rolled with me and he, he goes, he said to me, Oh, I've always wanted to roll with the pregnant girl. Like mm -hmm. he was, would, would like joke about it. And it was some people were, you know, very light about it, but I like, I like suppressed it so much. I don't even think I even cried about it. You know, like I didn't even give it merit that like I was letting go of this thing and this person, this soul, this whatever. And this, and I never processed it and I never talked about it and I never, I never did anything about it. I don't even think I cried about it. So in this moment of, of, what about of like total, total experience, I let it out and I said, it's okay. And then I did the best I could and I, I grieved and I, I released it. And, and the medicine just said, you're going to keep releasing this and it's okay. And you know, it, you don't need the medicine to release it, but to, um, to heal yourself by, by talking about it, by sharing your experience, by, you know, letting other people know that it's okay. We make mistakes and to be able to process it and, and let it out. Um, it's so, so important. Oh my God. I mean, so, if you have an abortion anyway, why wouldn't you just fight? I mean, that would have been a way to have an abortion like during the fight. No, they don't let, they wouldn't let you, Adam. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying if you were, no. He's all right. going for the joke. Sorry, sorry. But I would have, I would have, but I didn't know at that moment what I, I didn't even believe it. You know what I mean? Like, and I didn't I'm have saying, that. I'm saying let your opponent kick you in the stomach or something, you know, like. Sorry, bad. The girl that I just fought, my last girl that I just fought, Kim Kimberly, she apparently fought like five months pregnant. She didn't know. And they oh, my know God. In Brazil. You don't know when you're five months pregnant? That's like some, that's some bath, bath, bathroom and Walmart type of pregnancy right there. No, but um, she, she had the baby and everything's fine. So, yeah. Hey, Heather, I have a question. Had you been thinking about the abortion before this or had you not thought about it for years? You know, when I, when you say what have I thought about it, I, I, it was something that I wrote down on releasing something I wanted to release okay. because I knew it's always been in the back of my mind is like something that was painful, but that I never processed, you know? And so I knew that there was, it was in there. Like I knew it was going to, knew it was going to come out, but I, I have a, had a lot of stuff in my life. I didn't know it was going to be that thing that was so pivotal, um, in my toad experience that like, that came up and that like what my mom 
like my resentment from my mom and like she like knowing she did all she could and all that just around this like motherly feminine thing um i don't know <laughs> so i mean would you recommend this because it sounds like throwing up for 12 hours uh you know just being in all kinds of pain not knowing where you are and then to bring to like let go of an abortion you had which is awful i mean i i had to go through this i got to go pregnant when i was younger which we had an abortion and it's an awful experience but is this the way to, I mean, it just seems like a lot. To, to, to so the guys that I did it with, they all got sick in the morning, but none of them got sick. They weren't sick all night. So they all left with these, like, I mean, they looked different from the day they walked in and the day they left in three days. They all had profound experiences, really enjoyable experiences. Um, and like felt great when they left. So I've heard uh, mix things. And then the lady that I, that's coaching me, my integration coach told me after, not before that she's, she suffered a lot of depression the, after the three months after her uh, experience with Ibogaine. And yet she's been years since she's done it. And she says she still feels like she gets things and realizes that in the long run, it was the best thing for her. It, it reset her, even though it was challenging and, and she was very down. There's things that like, she was, she processed. And if she wouldn't have processed that, like energy or uh, emotions and, and, and that stale energy that gets in us, if we don't let it out, it becomes illness. It becomes migraines. It becomes whatever. Right. So that's the whole point is if we don't release this stuff, then we become sick. We get cancers, we get issues. But you think that you think that you were holding this in for so long and that was what making, was making you sick? I think so. I, I really, I, I fucking hope so. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, and, and I will, we'll check back in a few months and see where I'm at. <laughs> but like, that's the whole thing. It's, it's, I, I do believe that it's, it's part of it. it I have a question Heather, because I, I'm definitely on the same, on this journey with this stuff. I'm just reading a book right now called how to change your mind by Michael Pollan. Hmm. And it's all about mushrooms and ayahuasca and, and the toad. He doesn't talk about Ibogaine. If, if you were to do one of them again, which one would it be? I don't, I hope, I mean, I don't want to ever do Ibogaine again. Um, ayahuasca, I've done ayahuasca three times, three, three separate nights. Um, and it was, two of the nights were wonderful. And one of the nights was very challenging. I would do ayahuasca again, especially after doing this talk. <laughs> I mean, not toad doing this ibogaine. The ibogaine is is the they call it the grandfather of psychedelics because it's it's very stern and and the ayahuasca is the grandmother because it's she's very kind and he, like my ayahuasca experience was never out of the body. Like I don't think I ever did enough, but like I know there are people who were thrashed thrashed around and shot in outer space, but always held every time they were. And, you know, I, I didn't have that experience, but every experience in the ayahuasca, I felt very connected. Like ayahuasca, um, I felt the, the moon and the, 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 um, the world and, and the, neat, the floor underneath me, everything was under this one heartbeat that just, yeah. I felt like super connected. Um, and mushrooms- Have you always been spiritual or, or has this made you spiritual? Um, I wouldn't say it changed my spirituality uh it maybe confirmed you know the the after life more than like not the afterlife as in the heaven or heaven and health but like that our that our soul is more than just you know this but you look a lot happier you actually look a lot happier but how bad was your breath uh, throwing up 12 hours i mean you must have had, but your breath must have been horrible, right? So there was this funny time. So I was, I was trying to throw up, I was throwing up the medicine, remember I told you, and I, I wanted a mint so bad and I was laying there and I was thinking, how do I tell them I need a mint, right? So I tell the, this girl comes over and I go, like my, I, I need a mint, right? Like I can taste medicine. So she goes away, she comes back with a cough drop and she gives me a cough drop and she's like, here, it's not a mint, it's a cough drop. So I take, she goes, but, before she hands it to me she goes don't choke so i'm laying there up with my you know laying on the pillow and i take it so i go like this on my tongue 
And it's so bad, the taste, the cough drops taste so bad. And I'm just like, why did she give this to me? This is just as bad as the damn medicine, you know? And I just lay there and I like put the cough down, down, cough drop down on my pillow or somewhere, not my pillow, next to me. And in the morning I woke up, it was like stuck to the middle of my back. <laughs> now, how much did this thing cost you this whole trip? You know what, Adam, I was really lucky and someone sponsored me. Um, oh, wow. Baby? It was supposed to be like four thousand dollars, and oh, somebody God. sponsored Damn. me for it. Dog, wow. that's not gonna stick with acid. It's a lot cheaper. <laughs> really? Now, do you do acid, Kevin? Acid in my room is a lot cheaper than going to Mexico. <laughs> you know, you know what? You think of pro athletes. This is exactly what I think of: <laughs> acid and fucking ayahuasca and the toad. And I mean, like, why? Why is there? Why are the comedians the ones that are sober here out of the four of us? Uh, <laughs> But look, listen, Heather, I know you've had horrible head trauma. It caused you to retire early. If, if this does the trick, I, I'm going to be so happy for you. Thank you, Sam. I, I know that you weren't even sparring because some fucking amateur tried to knock you out in sparring fucking and sparring and fucked up your whole career. So if you go to Mexico and you take the toad and you throw up and then you realize that all the stress from some shit that went down years ago is what was doing it, then God bless you. So You know, I think – so. Th as what I've been told in this whole experience is that the way, what Ibogaine does, and my, my head's really warm, so I'm, I'm really hoping this is what's going on, but what it does is it changes the neuroplasticity in your brain and, and it creates new neural pathways. And, and um, so even though I felt really horrible this last week and had more migraines and been sick and everything, there's still a lot of healing going on in there. And so I'm hoping that, you know, little by little, it will start to feel better um, the, releasing this trauma, talking about it, um, you know, all that, and, and just continue to release it, continue to, to let go and, and cry and, and, and just. But why, no, how come everybody, except for Joe Rogan, that like tries to pitch mushrooms and DMT, they all look homeless and, and like, <laughs> and, and their eyes are all going in six different directions. Like, like, <laughs> like they need better. What? Adam, that's changing. Uh I'm telling you, man, it's changing. In the past, like, 10 years, that shit's going to completely change. They just decriminalize mushrooms in certain places. I think you should get your sponsor, Heather, to sponsor Adam, because I think he would need – He need you need a no, trip like this, Adam. You need some whole, toad in I your have life. mushrooms. I have a whole – I have so many – going to start with the mushrooms. But you've I never done the toad, Adam. I haven't taken them. I'm not liking anyone's toad, okay? My wife <laughs> doesn't like when I like her toad. Uh, so <laughs> – so, so Kevin, uh, what do you, what do you think of Heather's experience? Uh, I mean, uh, it sounds really intense and I mean, obviously I appreciate you sharing it and I, I hope that, uh, I hope that you find, you know, what you're looking for. Uh, man, it sounds really intense to me. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to throw up for 12 hours, but I guess if that's what you need, then I, I, I hope you find some, some solace in it for sure. Now, was it John Jones's kid? Who was, the, who was the one that got you pregnant back at Jackson Winkle? Are you going to, I don't, I don't need to talk about that, but okay, it, all right. I, just, just, all right. Just blink three I didn't times have a boyfriend at the time. So it was, okay. <laughs> all right. So it, it, it was, it was Jones. Cause I would have been a good athlete. You got to admit you could have had champions. All right, but listen, Heather, so, so now you and Connor are – now, do you want to have kids? You'd be a great mom. No, I, I, I never wanted kids. And, you know, there was, there was a part of me during that experience that was like, you can now. You can be like almost like as a repentance of, of that whole thing. But I, I just – I woke up thinking, no, no, no. Like I don't – I really don't uh, think that I have the patience nor the um, – really desire like i don't really have that desire well so, after growing up um, for 12 hours not the time to decide if you want kids or not i mean no offense it's not who's gonna want who's gonna throw up 12 hours like i want kids i mean that's not exactly but there, i mean i just think that you're you're so neurotic and fun and you'd be such a good mom uh i think you'd be a you you would you'd be such a good mom because you'd, you'd be everybody. a great addition to the gene pool your genes would be great mixed yeah, with some other take care of everybody she, she's the kind of person at a party Make sure everyone's having a good time. She plans it. She, then she annoys everybody to like, are you having fun? But she's such a good host. Uh, I think you'd be a great mom. And Kevin, you'd be a good dad too. You, you, you want to have kids one day or no? Yeah, I mean, maybe someday, but not for a while. <laughs> yeah, you, well, you got to move out of your parents' house first. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> I'm, 
Just visiting. I got my own place. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. So, Kevin, who do you want to fight That's next? why I'm in the garage, because I don't want to fucking do this right next to my dad. I've known, I've known Krim since he was 21. Yeah. 21, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Growing up a lot. Wow. Was he always, well, thank you, man. Was he always just together? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, Kevin, who do you want to fight next? Uh, man, I don't know. I think uh, I think uh, we're probably going to drop down to thirty five. So uh, I don't really know, man. Uh, who I fight isn't isn't really what I focus on, man. I try to just focus on me, and I fight whoever my coach tells me to. You know. Well, listen, I didn't see it, but I I know it's probably just a bad night, and you know I I we all have them. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. And uh, you know, it was it was just a bad night and uh I didn't I didn't show my best and uh, I'm excited to get back out there and show what I can really do. Yeah. Did you lick the toe the night before? Is that what happened? Did you lick toads? <laughs> I mean, I, I wish I had that as an excuse. <laughs> Heather, do you think that like all UFC fighters should do the toad? Do you think that's something that should be like necessary for everyone with CTE and stuff? You know, I, I'm still learning about, we'll see how it heals me. But um, the reason I did this after the Ibogaine, like I was very hesitant. I was feeling so shitty. And about a year and a half ago, I was doing um, a video interview up with Unlimited Sciences, um, a company that I work with here in Denver, it's, um, doing, you know, psilocybin research with John Hopkins and stuff. Um, but they were doing a re this an interview on me about it and one of the ladies that was doing it one of the producers she said she was a hockey player too and she had brain trauma and she said the toad helped her the most with her brain okay. trauma because i haven't had any help really i haven't felt a difference from psilocybin i have felt emotionally better from psilocybin i i felt connected ayahuasca has done amazing things for me but none of them healed me the way that i was looking for so that's why i continued to the ibogaine and when, because this girl told me that when I was hesitating on doing it on Sunday morning, I remembered her saying that. And so I, I'm curious. I really am curious. I think everyone should do it. Honestly, um, I think it's, it's, um, it's very eye opening and it's going to show you what you need to see. And I think it's, uh, I think all of these medicines have their time and their place. And, and, um, you know, I think, it's got to be the right time and place for everyone to do it because, um, yeah, but I think still, I think psychedelics in general for healing from what the research says, again, I haven't experienced that yet. And, and, and I don't know if I'm still just have so much that I need to do more or what, but you know, I've, I've seen the other people talk about the healing. I see what the, the, uh, just saying with unlimited science, if you guys uh, are interested in seeing some of this psilocybin, research um check out unlimited sciences and it's 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 incredible it really is uh, did, your boy, did, connor, did connor do it too uh you have to ask him oh god to be continued nice <laughs> well listen i, I love it how do you look you seem like you're in a really good place uh and, you know, and, and, and if you guys don't know i mean she, her father was in the military her father used to like jump out of airplanes uh no. She wanted to, he, I didn't do that. But one time there was a girl picking on her. Her father drove her to a fight and told her to fight the girl in front of him. And she was like wow. 11 or something or 12. And then cheered her on. Uh, this girl. Oh, he started fighting the, the, the girl's boyfriend. Uh, he, he, he started pushing the, girl, the girl's boyfriend like, where's your homeboys now? This is in Fargo, North Dakota. Where's your homeboys now? Where's your homeboys now? So then the sister jumped on his back. And then I, and then uh, the girl, I'm, you know, pulling the, the sister off my dad's back and like, it was this whole thing, but. Um, I can't tell if that's a good dad or the <laughs> best dad ever. <laughs> but just the girl, she was a photography uh, uh, major in college. She, she went to, uh, played hockey and then she just took up MMA at like 23. Under 28. Benny, 28, 28. Under Benny the Jet, finally made the UFC at 45. I, I mean, she's doing, she's doing, <laughs> I am so impressed by you, Heather, like for real. Uh, and, and I'm happy you finally licked the toad because you're known for, you're known for your toad licking skills. So I'm happy that <laughs> other people can finally experience it as well. Um, you know, <laughs> that's good for you. Good. I'm, I'm Next happy. time she's on podcast, she'll be pregnant. I guarantee it. <laughs> right. No. Listen, uh, Bill, what do you have coming up? Um, I, I want to lick a toad. 
I swear to God, that's pretty much all I want to do is look at that. I, I'm going to be at the Houston Improv this weekend. Um, and then we do a show with you in Arizona. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We're going to Arizona. Uh, and then, uh, uh, Heather, what do you have coming up? Man, you know, I'm literally taking the next few days off um, to just rest and heal and, and write and think. And I'm um, hoping that I start to feel better. And... You know, um, we were supposed to go to Vegas um, not for Naga on the 20th, but it just got canceled. I was going to go coach over there and get my hair done with Claude Baruch, my hairdresser, my best. She's the best. Oh, Heather, by the way, I got to show you. There we go. There you go. Nice. Well, take play that action. Okay. So, Heather, <laughs> um, me, me and Heather hung out in Vegas one time. She's like, I want to take you to the best sandwiches, right? I was like, oh, okay, great. We had at like the gay AIDS clinic. Where there's like, there's a, where like, it's like, it's all like people with AIDS and they're gay, which is fine, but it's just not what I expected to have a sandwich at. Like, am I, am I that's not what happened? So Jake Shields told me when, cause he was one of my coaches on the ultimate fighter, told me about this place at the gay and lesbian center or something that was owned by the Zufa, right? Remember? Yeah. 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 Um, it just was, but, yeah, that's funny. It was, I was eating a sandwich and people were making comments like, like, Ooh, I like the way you eat that. Oh, what about on New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve, we're going around and I had the smelliest smelling weed ever. And everywhere we went, <laughs> people would ask us. <laughs> oh, we're both fucking stoned, driving lost. Uh, she has her two ACL surgeries. I have a, my fucking leg at ACL surgery. We're hopping along like fucking robots. It was, uh, it was, it was beyond, like, we, we couldn't even walk that we like, took like you know like the uh where you carry like luggage and i, I put her in the luggage no, thing. They let me stand in it. yeah I, I, was, I was i was rolling her because she couldn't walk and she was so fucking no high. he makes me on new year's eve he makes me in crutches like less than a month after my acl surgery he makes me go all the way to this we go to the sugar factory through all these people and i'm like fuck adam you better not let anyone run into me and then i was like hey can you call um uh, and see if they'll get me a wheelchair back right so we call and they instead of bringing a wheelchair back they bring one of those luggage carts instead of a wheelchair and then and then they don't even let me sit in it they just roll it back and oh. I, there i am fucking still crutching along oh yeah. <laughs> we got up to a rough start see we were, we were friends and i was friends with felice herrig and she invited me to her party but it was a victory party over heather so <laughs> I, I i i went and she's like where are you i'm like oh, i'm at a party and she's like it's over me i was the one she beat i'm like yeah well that, i mean you know details you know details are <laughs> minor so, but, but by the way so what, what do you think of felice selling her feet now so felice herrick has a she's selling her pictures of her feet on only fans uh have you bought any of them you man i'm not gonna judge her she can uh yeah you, know, you don't want to lick the toes <laughs> <laughs> all right well listen i will be uh in gilbert arizona march 13th with bill dawes jay moore uh jonathan kite it's a stack show then i'm at the house of phoenix in arizona in scottsdale March 25th to the 28th, the Comedy Catch in Chattanooga. I want to see Toothless Tom out there. And uh, that's April 2nd and 3rd. And the Boca Black Box Comedy Club, April 24th to 23rd. Uh, Heather, I'm happy that you're finding some peace in your life. Uh, Kevin Kroom, uh, set up those shots. Uh, you're, a fucking, you're a monster, bro. You're a fucking monster. Uh, Bill Dawes, thank you for coming on the show. Take care, guys. Thanks, Have guys. A you guys are great, man. Big fans, both of you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Take care. Guys, thanks for having me.